So you're trying to get your first internship as a software engineer, or maybe you already got an internship and now you're trying to land that big name internship to put on your resume. The first thing I wanna say is that you don't have to have an internship in order to have a successful software development career, just like you don't need a degree, but it does make things a heck of a lot easier. I personally noticed that I got a lot of interviews at big companies for having that three month experience at a large company. So there are really two main phases here. The first thing is getting the interview and the second thing is nailing that interview. And those two things are really pretty different. So let's start with the first thing, how to get an interview. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is resumes. You want to keep your resume as short and concise as possible. I see people adding additional fluff to their resume. And honestly, the first thing is you want to have it no more than one page because recruiters, when they're looking for a candidate, they're going through probably dozens or hundreds of uh, resumes. Um, so if they see one that's like a couple pages, they're going to be like, I'm just not even going to read this and they're probably going to throw it out. Now, there are a ton of resume templates out there for college students. But the essential things are gonna be the same. You're gonna to wanna to list your skills that you have, maybe the languages and services that you're proficient in, as well as what you've had exposure to. You're probably gonna have a section where you talk about your projects that you've worked on. And then maybe if you do have any of that previous work experience, that's probably gonna be near the top. And I might even make a separate video just talking about how you can improve your resume and I might even go over my own. But one thing I do wanna mention is, say you do have some work experience, you're probably gonna have a couple of bullet points talking about what you did. One thing you wanna to try to do is always have some kind of number in one of those bullet points. And these are called quantifiers. For example, you might have a bullet point that says, I wrote unit tests in JUnit. Well, that doesn't really tell you too much. Something better would be, I wrote 20 unit tests in JUnit adding an additional 30% code coverage to our application. So really when a recruiter goes over and they see those numbers, those will kind of pop out. So really try to have at least one quantifier in each one of your bullet points. The next thing I wanna talk about is career fairs. Now, if you're at a university, you're probably gonna have one or more career fairs. You, know, you might have one a year, um, you might have one a semester. At my school, it was quarters and we had one every quarter. I went to a polytechnical school, so we did have a career fair strictly dedicated to software engineering degrees, which was really cool because really like every company or every big company that you can think of was there. The only downside is there were like thousands of students that were going to these things and there were only maybe a few dozen companies. So if you wanted to talk to any company, you'd have to stand in line for like 30 minutes. But you do want to have some kind of preparation going into these career fairs. The first thing is bring plenty of copies of your resume because almost every place that you talk to, you're probably going to be handing them a resume. Another thing that you want to have ready is your 30 to 45 second elevator pitch. And this is for when you're introducing yourself to someone. The three things that you want to hit on are first, you want to introduce yourself. Second, you want to talk about your background. And third, you want to talk about what you're looking for in your next role. Now, it's very hard to stick out at these career fairs because really everyone else there is very similar to you. So you can't just show up and be like, hey, I'm a computer science major. It's like, well, so is everyone else here. And you probably don't have much work experience either to stand out. So one thing is GPA. You want to try your best, obviously, to have a high GPA because that's one thing that can separate you from other people. For me personally, I remember I was talking to a guy at HP and I had my GPA on my resume and he's like, wow, your GPA is so high, I have to give you an interview. So that's one way to stick out. Another way is by having side projects. Uh, for me personally, I was working on a Shopify store and I pretty much developed the entire front end. So that's something that you could put on. Uh, you could also have maybe if, if you've worked on any iOS or Android development, that's another thing that maybe if you have something on the app store, you could show that that would absolutely help you stick out. Another thing is that you want to be trying to network with as many people as possible within your field. For example, there was someone that I worked with on a project like a year before, and I ended up seeing him at a career fair. And I was like, hey, man, how's it going? You know, long time no see, you know, blah, blah, blah. We had some small talk. And basically he was like, hey, here's an invitation to like a dinner that we have tonight that we only invited to a few people. So basically I went to that dinner and ended up meeting employees. Um, I met a recruiter there and got their inf contact information um, and basically it, it led to me getting an interview. So if I didn't know that person, um, I probably would have just talk to them, give them my resume and probably never heard from them again. So in conclusion, you know, network with as many people as possible, be prepared going into your career fair um, and definitely take advantage of them. Another way to get interviews is by utilizing the clubs on your campus. For example, we had a club called White Hat, which was a computer security club, but it was really like the main club for all computer science majors. So they were a club that was very well connected within the industry and they would always have tech talks of people or engineers coming in from big companies and basically 
you know, giving talks on whatever subject. And these were great to go because one, they were very informative. And two, usually you would have someone that was in like their recruiting department. And that way, that's just another way to, you know, get your foot in the door um, and easily get an interview. So for me personally, utilizing those talks, I was able to get an internship at Google as well as Facebook for an internship. Another thing to mention is LinkedIn. You know, you want to make your LinkedIn profile as strong as possible um, because there are a ton of university recruiters on there. And that's definitely another way to connect with them. So getting the interview really is just half the battle. So once you have the interview, how do you actually land the internship? Well, luckily the interview process for internships is not nearly as tedious as it is for a full-time job, but nonetheless, it really just takes practice. You know, there's no secret, there's no shortcut that you can take. Uh, you really just have to study your data structures and algorithms as well as you can. Now, I do have a video that's dedicated solely to how to prepare for the software engineering interview. So you can click one of these things here to go to that. But what I did want to go over is actually specifically talking about the interviews that I got when I was looking for an internship. So as I mentioned, I did have an interview with HP and basically it was two parts. One was a lightning round, which they asked me, you know, general questions that I feel like most computer science students should know, like, you know, what's the difference between an array and a linked list? Um, what's the lookup time of using a hash table, things like that. And then the second part was he gave me a piece of C code. Yeah. And he's like, what's wrong with this? And will it compile? Which ended up being a trick question because he was like, it depends on the compiler whether this or not will compile. But yeah, I mean, honestly, it was my first technical interview and I pretty much got wrecked. The second interview that I got was actually with Google. So Google asks two 45 minute phone interview questions and that's really the entire process. After that, you'll know if you get a pass or a fail. So the first interview that I had with them was revolving around serializing and deserializing a list of strings. And the second question I got was revolving around binary search. Instead of having distinct values, uh, there were, you know, basically you could have duplicate values, but it was still a sorted list and you have to use binary search to find a particular number. The other interview that I had was with Amazon, which I ended up receiving an offer for ultimately. And the first phase, which I think they still use this process. The first part is a seven question multiple choice quiz. And basically it could be things like, you know, here's a piece of code, what's wrong with it? And sometimes it'll be like, oh, instead of using an or, it should be an and. So that's the first part. And then the second part is one 45 minute phone interview. And the question that I got was actually a lead code question. And it was, I believe, um, valid parentheses. So I'll leave a link to that in the description. So like I mentioned, these were really just one or two interviews, which is far less intense than when you're actually going through a full interview process for like a full-time position, um, where you're going through like, you know, four or five plus interviews. And that's mostly because the internship itself is kind of like a three month long interview. And what they're really testing you on is how fast you can adapt to a new environment, as well as how long it takes you to develop new skills, like new programming languages that they have on their stack. And to me, you know, this three months are really, this is like your time to shine because a lot of times at the end of an internship, they will give you a full-time offer. Say if usually if you're going to your senior year, uh, they'll give you a return offer to come back as a full-time employee the next year. And this is like a huge weight lifted off your shoulders. If you, you know, knowing that you're going into your senior year, already knowing that you have a job locked up. And honestly, you can kind of look for other jobs while you're waiting to graduate to see if you get anything better, but that's up to you. But yeah, I didn't have that luxury and it, it definitely made things more stressful. So if that's something that you can land, then more power to you. So I believe the best way to prepare for internship interview questions is by doing a lot of lead code problems. And I would really start off by just doing as many easy level problems as possible. If you don't know, lead code has easy, medium and hard, but I don't remember doing any internship problems that were harder than an easy level. So just try and do as many of those as possible. And then once you have, once you feel like you have a good grasp on those, start doing the medium problems. And I assure you, like once you start doing a lot of medium problems, the easy ones are going to seem pretty easy, which at first it's not like that. And just another thing to mention is you never want to be memorizing these problems. Um, you want to be able to solve them from scratch every time. I do also have additional videos where I do go over lead code problems. So definitely check those out. Another resource that I found useful were watching mock interviews on YouTube. Now there is a YouTube channel called interviewing.io as well as I've posted interviews that I've done in the past on my channel. But I think the more I watched these interviews and kind of like thought of it as like, okay, what would I say or what would I do if I was the one actually interviewing? It kind of just made things less intimidating when I did do an actual interview. And really just having that repetition made interviewing less intense. Um, and I think, you know, I was just less nervous. I mean, I, I still always do get nervous before I go into an interview. 
but I think it's okay to be a little bit nervous. I actually think it's good. It kind of like, you know, keeps you on your toes, but I definitely got past that stage of like, you know, hoping I don't embarrass myself or just like freezing up. And then I could just focus on, you know, just solving the problem at hand. So really at the end of the day, practice makes perfect. There's no shortcut around learning your data structures and algorithms. And like I mentioned, you know, you never want to memorize your solutions. You know, you want to go back and do, th do things the right way. You know, if this is something that you want to pursue full time is this is going to be your career. Uh, just, you know, go back and do things the right way. But yeah, I know just going into this whole process can be a little intimidating, but we all have to start somewhere. You know, a lot of my viewers, a lot of my subscribers, you know, you guys are sharp. Um, I see a lot of you guys on my Discord channel. Most of you guys are students. So, well, at least a lot of you are. And I know if, if I ever make a mistake in my video, you guys uh, aren't shy to let me know. I see a lot of you guys and you guys are, you know, you guys are way ahead of where I was when I was at your stage. So yeah, I mean, I hope you guys found this video helpful. I do highly recommend you do try and get an internship before you graduate. For me personally, if you don't know, I did an internship at Amazon in Portland and it was really one of the best experiences that I've had in tech. I made a lot of friends, I learned a ton, got that experience on my resume. So yeah, highly recommend it and I hope you guys found the tips in this video helpful. Uh, if you did, go ahead and hit me with a like um, and you know, subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. But other than that, I want to thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.